So where we're heading now, we, we, we're getting more close to, um, to where we need to be by so somewhat improving our models. And what we're essentially doing here, um, anyway, we read to you and tell exactly what to do. So they're saying the actual gas turbine um, differs from the ideal Brayton cycle uh, on the several accounts, right? So they say for one, pressure drop occurs during the heat addition and the heat rejection processes. So there are changes in pressure. And if you look at the figure 936, you can see the line is essentially representing that's the black curve. Um, you got the, the, the one, the solid line is as um, 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 it is a slight drop. Uh, the actual work input the compressor is way more. And actual uh, work output from the turbine is less. So the compressor does more work and we actually get turbine this is obviously due to irreversibilities, in essence, you heat losses, et cetera, et cetera. So deviation of the actual compressor turbine from the ideal and ideal is one. Um, what we do essentially is uh, we account for the isentropic efficiencies. So that's another concept we'll touch on again, sort of concept daily, but obviously um, it's because we assume isentropic, um, it's, it's a pure entropy process, which is not true. And all what we do is basically have these two new equations. The compression efficiency is equal to H2S minus H1 divided by H2A minus H1. So remember, we actually put in more work. So we have to find H2A. So H2A will be a new thing we have to find. Um, with a turbine, turbine is going to be H3 minus H4A. Um, H3 minus H4S. Now, I just want to make sure of something, um, and that is to do with the formula sheet while I'm here. If those formulas are on there, just in case people forget. Because last time I did not actually, from what I remember, include those formulas. But fortunately, it is in the formula sheet, so fantastic. Okay, have a look at your formula sheet, and then you can, um, yeah, so. So what we're going to do now is look at the same example, which we did previously, and then we're just going to include those two new efficiencies uh, uh, within the example. All right, so I'll just, I'm going to copy this, um, the actual text of the example, and you'll actually just get back into the whiteboard and then um, we, will, we will include it. So it's,
How's it guys? Can you hear me? I think my network went down. Can you guys all hear me? Um, where last did you hear me? Um, where was I lost? Fantastic. I'm, I'm recording. Can I discuss the, do you hear me discuss the compressor efficiency and the turbine efficiencies? Yes, sir. You were just about to start with this example. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay. So, students, thank you for your patience. So, this question is exactly the same. However, now we have these um, compressors and turbine efficiencies, right? So, what I did say now, we our graph was uh, was in the so it was ideal, and now what we're incorporating is um, some actual values, and um, what is what is there now required for us is to find actual entropy values using these two formulas, which is in your formula sheet as well. All right. So starting off with the compressor, so we follow the same thing. However, we follow exact same process um, to find all these values. But now it's important to note is that um, just give me a second. I mean, I took my graphics tablet off. Um, you to note is that this H4 value is now, when you find it, um, H2, in fact, H2 will become H2S, and H4 will be H4S, because that is the, these are the, the, um, the isentropic values, right? So we're going to now go from this isentropic into finding the actual value. So we'll start with the compressor efficiency. So this is normally given to you. Um, so they're asking what the compressor, the compressor efficiency is 80%, right? That looks like a typical value. So we go that H2S minus H1 minus H2A minus H1. So we know this is 0 0.8. We obviously have H2S, and H2S was found using the tables. That's your isentropic value. Um, and that value was 544.179. Just let me know if I'm correct here. So it's 544.179. H1 was 300. Point, um, we have H2A and then minus 300.19. We have to solve for this. What you could have done is neatly sort this out. You could have said this times H2A minus H1 equals H2S minus H1. Divide by the compressor efficiency. Then basically H2A will be H1 plus H2S minus H1 divided by your compressor efficiency. That is just mathematically sorting this out here um, to solve for H2A. That's normally, I just normally just go straight into this formula. So H1 is 300.19 plus your H2S is 544.179 minus 300.19 divided by your compressor efficiency. So can we get that actual value? And all we're going to do, students, is include these actual values into our into into our into our formulas. And there's nothing more than that. 605.97. I think that is correct. Um, I'll just recheck it for myself here. Just end up closing the textbook now. Uh, five is it 179, I think. So it's nothing. It's 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 not. It's new. Yeah, 605.17. But be aware um, between the difference. Um, so we've got H2A, right? I'm going to go pen thick here, guys. This, this would, I'm not really happy with thickness here. Okay, so what we do now, we have the same value. So that's H2A now, right? We will we'll get to when we start using them. So we have the turbine. Turbine, um, 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 basically, it's the, it's the actual work, which is on top, and obviously the isentropic work. So remember, here the turbine, the turbine is actually doing less work, more or less, less work than it's supposed to, and it's obviously the compressor has to work more. Okay, so your turbine efficiency was given as 85%. Turbines are normally more efficient. And what I'm going to do, instead of me um, putting the values in, I'm going to sort this out as well. So here you get H3 minus H4S times your turbine efficiency. And then we have to add... Um, uh, um, okay, let's just quickly see. H3 uh, minus this, and this should be equal to H4A. 
I'm pretty sure my maths is correct here. That times that, bring that over, or is it plus? Okay. This comes over. Yeah, that looks good. So H4A is equal to H3, um, which you've gotten before. You just go have a look what H3 was. That's 1395.97. 1395.97 plus the difference between H and H4S, which was found using your, your air tables, table A17. That's going to be, um, where's this guy? Uh, H4S8, 78937. That's him. 789. What does it say? Seven eight nine um, point three seven times that efficiency over there, which is zero point eight eight. So I'm gonna call that efficiency over here zero point eight eight. Okay, zero point eight eight. Okay, I think that's oh sorry, zero point eight five. Just let me just correct that for you. Okay, so can I have my actual entropy um, at the, for the turbine wall, at the engine of the turbine? Let's have a look. Do you guys agree with that answer? I'm hoping my math is right. Let me just double check here. Eh? Um, if I bring that over there, divide by that, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, 888.37. Okay, I think this is correct. Um, kilojoules a kilogram, and then once once you have your actual values, you essentially have to now just just um kind of repeat our calculations. So normally you only give you given an ideal or actual, you just be given an actual anyway. So just just be aware. So in this case, work net. Um, well, let's start a compressor work and then obviously just pull it up like we normally do. So now it's going to be compressor, it's H2A minus H1. We get that answer and our turbine work is going to be H3 minus H4A. So that's what essentially changed. We're just using actual values now, arguably actual values. So this is going to be H2A was, um, you found it at 605. So the compressor, so the compared to the previous one, that's what we're expecting. So that's 300. We can sort that on, that answer out there. And so probably just okay. uh, And then for H4, we get the 1395.9 minus 880.37. And if, you, if we're going to compare these values, um, our compressor should. H2A should be higher, and, and this obviously the turbine work, I think, will be a bit lower. Yeah, the, H, the, H, the H4S, complete H4S. So you just quickly get those values. I'm just going to double check the work. Um, let me just compare the textbook here. Um, so, yeah, our entropy value should be six or five. Did we get that? Yep, and the, and the, and the other one, the, it's the turbine H4A, uh, 80, right? Did we get it, 80? Yeah, okay. So, so what is my, my new compressor work? Obviously, I'm giving time for you to catch up. Yeah, that doesn't solve all of these problems. Yes, sir. I got 304,98. 304,98. Is that your, your, your compressor work, right? Yeah, compressor work. For the other one, I got 515,61. Five, 
on five comma six one. Right. And all this really is is now we look at that. I'm not going to work on everything, but if you look at the thermal efficiencies and we work net divided by Q, Q in. So Q in is normally H3 minus H2S, but it's going to be H2A now, right? So we're going to have 13957 minus H2A, which is 605.179. So that's all it is. It's nothing really fantastic, but we, 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 we you know, we kind of improve on what we know there. Okay. So don't worry, next week I'll probably do one big gas turbine question before we start refrigeration. And um, yeah, we will, uh, I'll make sure everyone has some good practice, obviously. And of, and of course your book, it's a fantastic textbook, so I shouldn't worry too much. So your work net is uh, your turbine, so it's 515.614.98 divided by uh, Q in which is 780.791. Okay, so your actual, if you, if you compare our previous thermal efficiency, let's see what we got. Uh, obviously, there's, there's more marks on this kind of thing. Um, we should get efficiency, it should drop. So what is my thermal efficiency there? I'm working it out. Why is it so small? Sir, I got sick. Yes. I got 790 for the Q QE. Oh, it's a mistake, probably. Yeah. yeah. Let me see, it's me. That's a 790. Yeah. Yeah, 790. So let's work out that. That's 515.61 minus 304.98. 26.63. Look at that. What a change. What a change. Oh, 20 odd percent. Yeah, thank you very much. So do you guys get this concept of just including efficiencies? You can do exactly the same thing with um, with, uh, with the constant specific heats. And that would just be uh, using temperature values instead. So, so like for instance, in this case, obviously this is, what, this is what's expected of you, but let me not confuse you further if you are being confused. Guys, are there any questions with that? Any questions before we move on? Do we five minutes for questions? Can I, have, can I have a few thumbs up before I proceed, guys, just to make sure that you 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 happy, Mr. Matoso, Ernest, Jason. We're gonna see you. Uh, Lawazi, Mr. Sova, Snazo, Tommy. I'll be all happy. Yes. Is there anything anything on show up, guys? Um, what's important, guys, is know the process, especially with gas power cycles. It's the, the, the content is very bulky itself. There's, there's no real tricks. There's no like mathematical tricks you see in strengths and you know, and one just like know the process well, know how to find this way, know how to interpolate, know what the thermal efficiency of this one is, know the, that's thermos. It's not mathematical tricks in thermos, it's more of applying a concept. Okay, so seeing that we're all done with this, now we can head back to our, 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 our former lecture. And 
I just want to make you aware, within the slides, I have, let me just see the slides I have here. Um, there are practice problems. Obviously, these, these problems are coming from your textbook itself. Um, so, look at that. Make sure you practice them. Uh, it's key. key. Um, there's another one as well you can go through. And obviously, so normally with this problem, I normally encourage students to focus more, for, especially with gas turbines, more on the variation of specific heats. Um, if I'm feeling in a good mood, maybe, I might just give you constant. But normally, that's going to be variation. So I'm making your way a lean more to that side. But of course, you know, you must know how to do both. Okay, so <clears throat> I think we have like 20 minutes left, and um, just uh, well, 20, 30 minutes left roughly. Um, I'm going to see. I, I, I was going to go. If you're going to actually solve another problem, because then I might just. I might just keep that for next week and then obviously touch on refrigeration and just probably do two examples just to get introduction in. Because refrigeration, you only be assessed on that anyway in test two. So, yeah, but obviously I must do the lecture so that's out of the way. So, find configuration. So, what we just did now is the most basic form of, um, 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 I guess, the, the, the so called. Not the analysis, but the configuration, right? So if you look at this table over here, um, we've just basically done the, 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 the simple cycle. Okay. So there are a few mentioned, right? Okay. So in, in the, the second one, so let me just quickly um, duplicate the slide. Um, and don't worry, guys, you don't expect it to know all of this. Um, Obviously, in the interest of time, I can't cover everything in great detail, but it will not be fair to you guys. So, I'm sure if you guys have done air compressors before, like specifically in a two stage air compression, there's something called intercooling. So, we intercool the air between the two stages, right? Ideally, we want the, the air temperature to be exactly uh, and same as the inlet. This is, this is a bit more in detail in, in, in air compressors chapter, the reciprocating air compressors chapters. Another way to improve it is just looking at D um, and uh, D, yeah, D, where, where we, after the turbine exit, we, 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 we reheat the gas. And this is a concept actually uh, using in, in, in a more like on a, it's a typical concept, it's basically adding more entropy to the fluid, um, in, especially in steam. Um, and then what we're going to be really looking at is the, the intercool, not intercool, but more, well, it's not actually here. Uh, it's something called the recuperated cycle, where you're actually using the exit heat of the of the of the turbine and re uh, um re um uh, whilst re re what's what I'm looking for or circulating it just after the, the discharge the compression so that we actually can heat up the the air before it enters the, enters the combustion chamber, and we're gonna do it. This is the new concept. So the concept that we're actually gonna head into is called um regeneration right this is also uh, um obviously analogous and it is exactly um with um to do with waste heat recovery so it's that kind of thing for instance we could have done a similar thing on a car's engine where we maybe used exhaust gases we put it through something obviously and we can actually use the heat for god knows what maybe to to heat the car instead you know in in, in, in surviving the air conditioning system so the, the, I think that's, that that's definitely a, a Navy ship, if I'm correct, a WR21. And, and you know what it talks about? It's, it's one of the first ships to actually incorporate um, the, um, the gas compressor, intercooler, and exhaust heat recovery system technology, which is essentially what we're looking at. Um, and what it does is that it says it offers a reduction in fuel burn of 30% uh, um, across typical ship operating profiles. So that's fantastic, right? So how it basically works. The, uh, the intercooler cools the air before entering the, the high compression, reducing the amount of energy required to compress the air. If, if you, okay, yeah, that's one compressor side. And the recuperator, which is what we're going to be talking about, preheats the air, uh, um, the combustion air, by recovering energy from the exhaust. Like I said, before into the combustion, we add more energy to the air. I think this is similar to, um, do we have something like this, um, in, um, you know, in, in boilers with the economized, so what's all this components called again? Um, some of that, that exit heat to actually 
you know, we, 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 that, that energy. So, <laughs> excuse me, I'm still here. Ooh. Just gonna make this image a bit bigger. Just, um, just duplicate the slide here. Sorry. Um, just so we can have this image on its own here. Okay. Um, and this is, this is the WR21 that basically looks like. No. Um, can you guys see this? Yeah, you, you'll see. It's, it's just, just to show you, but at, at the bottom is the gas turbine, as, as you know. But as you can see here, we've got this um, this extra pipes and at, at point number four. And well, four, this is particularly four. So four is the um, essential, this, this heat exchanger. We so the exhaust will leave the exhaust at number five. Um, and what happens is this is obviously a combustion chamber over here, and number six is your turbines. And then what happens is we we basically heat the air before combustion. So so obviously there's some kind of heat exchanger which is required, right? So getting back, uh, that that is just the, the the actual schematic of how it looks like um, um, a two-dimensional schematic. We we, we Obviously, they have the intercooler. We're not looking at intercooling um, as of yet, um, but there is a recuperator, and the recuperator normally form as a counterflow heat exchanger. So, looking at the thermodynamics, what does it look like? So it says in a gas turbine, the temperature of the engine exhaust gas leaving the turbine is off, and the temperature of air leaving the compressor. Right? We are aware of this. So, therefore, high, high pressure air leaving the compressor can be heated by transferring the heat from the hot exhaust gases. The hot exhaust gases in a counterflow heat exchanger, which is also known as a regenerator or a recuperator, right? So that's the idea. Um, and then basically, what is shown to you is that is that how it looks like. So that's like the first addition of, of improving the the, the, the so-called Brayton um, uh, uh, Brayton or Joule power cycle. Of course, like I mentioned, the next level is the intercooling and reheating, which we're not going to do. We're just going to do the first form of of um, what is this of improvement. All right, so yeah, so from this we have um, new entropy values, right? Some a few things are going to change. So there's a nice video over here. You can actually watch it. I'm explaining how to work. I think this is just a summarized thing. And it says, in essence, regeneration increases the efficient, the thermal efficiency of a Brayton cycle by, by capturing some of the waste heat from the exhaust gases before it enters the combustion chamber. That's all what it really is. Nothing more than this. That's the first step of improvement on. On a, on a cast turbine. Okay. So normally I play the video. So what is what we're gonna have now is um, some new not new equation, but it's, it's all there. Um, and they say that the thermal efficiency of a Brayton cycle increases as a result of regeneration. So since the portion of energy of the exhaust gases that is normally rejected uh, to the surroundings is now used to preheat the air entering the combustion chamber. That's all it is. This in turn decreases the heat input of fuel. So we don't need as much fuel now. We're putting more energy actually into this. Um, and then of course, um, it decreases the heat input requirements for the same amount of network output. And I do say a special note, the limitation is that obviously we, we can only do this when the exhaust temperature is higher than the compressor. compressor. Otherwise, we do not have that since there will be no heat flow. In fact, I could actually reduce the thermal efficiency in this in this um, condition is not valid. So I must be very careful of that at all times. So you can fix your your your, your regeneration will be now will be something called like H5 um, minus H2. So looking at the actual graph, and I'm I'm just looking at it here. Um, it's it looks confusing, but it's not really. Um, Basically, if you look at the, the top line over here, right? Point two to three was normally deemed the, um, the whole heat in. Does it make sense to everyone? So I don't know, work, talk, talk to the state. So the concept is solid. Do you agree with me that two to three was the total heat input in the combustion chamber? You guys agree? Yes, yes. Sammy. Okay. So what happens now? Remember, and then four to one 
was the QR, right? You guys agree on that also? So what happens now, remember, if you look at four to six, four to six is now the, the, the heat being returned back into, back into, back after the, um, just before the, just before it gets the comp combustion chamber. So can you see between, let's say Q save equals Q regen, right? That, so it takes, and instead of having a whole two to three, we just basically set to five. So now our Q in, as you can see, has two components, which is Q regen and the Q in. I hope that is clear to everyone. Looking at the diagram alone. You just spend two minutes looking at it and you just let me know. Mr. Gabriel, you get it? Abril, Snazo, you guys see it? So this year at two to three, Q in. So I think, I think the understanding is, is, is quite critical in for, I think, you know, I want, I want people to really get this. Um, uh, start this duplicate this slide, I'll move this, I'll move this. I'm just gonna have a, uh, so a comparison of the previous graph and the other graph. Um, so you guys have a, a look at it. You compare it next to each other. All right. Um, so Q is initial two to three, and then Q out from four to one. Some of uh, one to four Q out, we are redirecting back into two and three. And of course, four to six and two to three will be equal to each other. Do you guys see it now? That's how it looks dynamically on the, on the theater diagram. Do you guys get it? What's, what's Friday? Your brains are all dead now. Yes. I'm gonna put a picture so you can actually see. It's, it's quite simple. We just we're just moving here to the other. Side. Thank you, Mr. Abri. I appreciate. It. So Q region is H five to H two, which is obviously that portion there. And what they're saying is that and, and then the max amount is H two five prime minus H two, which is essentially H four to minus H two, H four to H two, but what we must be aware of, um, heat exchangers have um, efficiencies as well, but we deem it effectiveness, and this is to do with your, your, the way you actually do analysis on heat exchangers. And we have Q region at divided by Q region max, and just say that you're gonna have to use effectiveness in, um, 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 in your computations. Um, and it's in this case, uh, we, it's like basically all your isentropic and compressing e efficiency, basically. Um, is the other models not shown here? Um, I feel like I am. Um, I have to probably touch on it again. Yeah, I'll probably have to touch on it again. Okay, so and then we what there's there's some obviously uh, a regenerative the high effectiveness of saves a great amount of fuel. Um, obviously, the more efficient it is, and typically values are. Or uh, the, the, the effectors of most regenerative practice is below 0 0.85. So heat exchanger is not that efficient, but well, arguably efficient, depending. And of course, one of the higher um, um, uh, effectiveness, um, one of the high effectiveness is is more, how do I say, it's, it's more expensive. So yeah. Okay, so I'm going to end off here, guys, and then you'll probably recap not to recap, we will just start an example of regeneration. Um, I have a debate. Obviously, I want you guys to get familiar with gas turbines. I don't want to bombard you with too much information. So for the first session and then the second session, we'll start with refrigeration. I, I, know, I know I can finish two examples of refrigeration. It's not too difficult to that. And then we have to meet for refrigeration in the second half. So just in conclusion, it has also a, 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 a formula. And I normally throw this formula in for bonus marks where I ask you, um, that you call standard A, and if I ask you if you do use a user regenerator, um, um, what would you incre increase by? So you could actually use this, this, this thing as well. Normally you have to calculate it using a variation. But nevertheless, um, I'm just showing you your ratios between T1 and T3. Obviously, that's what's important um, in a, in, in, in a, in a, in for, for, for this, for the, the, the efficiency and ratio. And yes, um, 
there's nothing more than, than, than that besides an example over here, which I have to obviously show. So I'll, if you look at, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I posted last year's class test, where you'd see a question like this easily hits around 50 marks. So when we come back next week, Friday, I'm going to probably um, do this and then we can have one practice question um, with this, which is, which is going to be good. And this will be essentially the, the benchmark of gas turbine. So we can do this kind of thing. We basically sort it out. Um, yeah. So anyway, guys, um, see you next week. Continue with this. Um, so I know it's a lot of information. Make sure you get come to the Brayton cycle. Make sure you start to the ideal. Start to the actual, do at least three, four examples. On Friday, you go to the regeneration, and then you basically conclude the session. Um, obviously, one could have done this now and, and, and extend it, but like I said, in the interest of time, I don't want to. I don't want to add some detail to refrigeration in particular. Um, that is why I'm, I'm, I don't want to save all my tricks for gas turbines. So nevertheless, um, thank you and uh, have a good weekend. And I will see you on Monday for strength of materials and electros. And it's our last week for the break, so by then. I will tell you exactly uh, by next week at least you have a by next week we'll be, we'll be ready for strengths for, for electrodes and you're good for refrigeration. Our moms are still busy with we haven't gotten to the offering mark yet. But um and then at least you know what to prepare for for the for the test coming up. So okay guys, if there's not any questions, I'll see you next week Friday and then um yeah. So next week Friday we're gonna continue with two sections. So any questions? Any questions? Okay, guys. See you. I'll post the slides up um, as well. Enjoy your weekend um, as well. Uh, make sure you do go over the stuff. Um, it's Keep or just keep keep up every day. That's the key. Um, and for thermos, again, my my word of advice is cheers is um is is procedure. Know how to solve what. It's not too much mathematical games. It's very seldom. Um, but know the procedure and make sure you practice. Um, yeah. Okay, guys. See you next week.